Hi guys, in this video I'm going to cover function parameters, arguments and return types. And I'll start out by writing a little bit of code in the main and later I change that code to use a function instead. So let's create a couple of variables. I call these number one and number two. We read in the two values so first we prompt in enter a number. I read this into number one and I read the second number enter another number. I read this into the variable number two and say both of these have to be positive. So I want to validate the first number. If the first number is negative or less than zero, I will output error. Please enter a positive number. And then I read the number again into the number one variable. And I will do the same thing with number two. So if number two is below zero or negative, I output an error and I prompt please enter a positive number and I read that number into number two. So what we notice here is we have duplicated code. We have the code here which outputs a, C, uh, a string to see out, we read in a value stored in a variable, we check if it's negative with a while loop, we output a message, we read in the value, and here everything is essentially identical, except there's a little bit difference in the string. But most part, it's really duplicated code. So this is an ideal case where we want to use functions. Especially if we have a typo, an error, we have to fix it only once. If we have an error here, um, we, have, we would have to fix it twice. Um, now, if we would have three variables, we would have to probably copy and paste the code and have it three times. So the more times we need to execute this code, the more benefit we get from using a function. But we definitely want to start using a function right from this moment on. So let's define a function prototype. And the function prototype has three parts. So we have the return type, number one. Then we have the function name. And we have a list of parameters. So parameters essentially is the input to a function. This is what we pass to a function. The return type defines the return value or the output of a function. So let's uh, come up with a name, how we call this here. This is probably entering some number and validation. We can just call it maybe get positive number or read positive number. So there's something we read from the user. Now, since we're reading a positive number, what what does this return? What do we want to get from when we call this function inside the main? In this case, we probably want to get um, an integer back. So we, when we call this function once, we get a, an integer back that we can store in the number two, number one variable. And when we call this function a second time, we store that value in the number two variable. But essentially, we prompt the user to enter something and then our function should take care of it and it should return a, an integer. So the return type we define as integer. This is our name. Now the third part that we need is parameters. And parameters is something we pass to the function. So we could pass a parameter, but I want to leave that as is without any parameters more uh, at this point. I'll add one later, but for now, let's leave it as this. This one is a function prototype, so we put in the semicolon 
And now below the main, we write the implementation. So int read positive number. And here we write the implementation. So this is what we want the program to do. So let's just copy this, paste it into our function. Now we don't have number one variable here. So let's define this in, inside the function. This one is a local variable. So a local variable means it, it, it only exists local to the function. So if we go back up to the main, this is a different variable than here. So, and since we don't really deal with number one and number two, number three here, let's just call this number. And at the end, I mentioned that it, this function returns an integer. So this is the type of value that the function can return. Now, what we want to return is we want to return the number that was entered by the user and that we validated. So after the while loop, this is definitely positive and that matches our description of the function. It returns a positive number. So we type in return, that's the keyword, and then the variable. The variable stores the value that we are returning. Now let's see, instead of writing this code here, let's remove this and let's call the function here, read positive integer. What this will do is it'll execute the code, but we don't deal with the return value at this point. So that we, if we just call the function, the return value gets lost. What we have to do here is an assignment. So we derive number one equals the function, and this assignment takes the return value and stores it in the variable number one. So if I run this program, we will see that it goes to the function call. Now it executes here, enter a number. If I enter three, it validated it. It was already positive, so it returned. And now it went here, enter another number. And if I would enter a negative number the first time, it will go into the loop here inside the function, prompt for a positive number. So let's say enter a positive number. It stops the loop, it returns, it stores it in number one, and then it would output it. Now let's do this with a second, part two. So in this case, we just do number two equals read positive integer. So we have two function calls here. Two times we call the same function, but each time we call it, we store it in a different variable. So if we output number one from the main and we output number two and we run this as well, we will see we get one number, we enter it and we loop until a positive value is entered, let's say five. Now we get please enter a number again. This is our second function call here. So the five was returned, stored a number one variable. We called the function again. It shows enter a number. Let's say enter eight. It will input the number, return it, store it in number two, and then output the two variables, which is five and eight. Five, remember, was returned from the first function call here and aid from the second function call. Now we can do it like this, that we declare the variables first and then we initialize it later, or we could do that right when we initialize it too. So we could do number one, here the declaration and initialization with a function call, and here as well. So the nice thing here about using functions, this is much easier to read than what we had before with duplicated code, longer code. It's really clear that we are reading a positive number, we're assigning it to the variable number one, 
we read another time a positive number and storing that in number two and then we output the two values. Now let's add another prototype and let's say we want to take these two numbers and add them up. So let's say we want to add sum number one plus number two and at the end we output sum. Now let's say we want to put this calculation also inside a function. So we will declare here a function, maybe we call it sum or add, and it adds two numbers, so we need to pass two numbers to that function. So we call it add, and this talks about parameters. So we have a parameter, we can call this Let's call it num1 and num2. So they are comma separated, just like we define variables, but in this case they are defined inside the two parentheses. And this function says to execute it needs an integer and it needs a second integer. It internally does something and then it will return an integer as a result. And what it does should be described in the function name. So in this case, it will add the two values and this will likely be the return value. So let's write an implementation for that function below. So we have num1, num2. These, these two parameters, they don't have to match but ideally they should match. And we could even just define the, the types here. That would be sufficient for the compiler, but it's still nice to have the identifiers up here because they also provide um, some information for to a programmer. When a programmer looks, looks through, it's like the table of contents where you can see um, and, and kind of describe what these parameters actually mean. So inside the function, we add the two values and we return it. And we can actually have a return keyword and then a statement. So we could do num1 plus num2. This would add the two values and after that, return it. So we wouldn't have even have to write larger code in this case. Now here, instead of writing the expression here, I do add num1, num2. And we pass in the two values, calculate it, return the the result and I store the result in the sum variable. Now this complaints, this one I cannot use num, num, num1, num2 don't exist in main, so let's call this number one and this number two. Now what this will do is, when I call it, it doesn't do doesn't pass the variable itself. It actually takes the value that is stored in number one, copies the value into the parameter or variable num1, and then it copies also the value in variable number two and stores it in the parameter num2. And the copied value is the argument. So this one here is a parameter and then I pass two arguments to that function, to the parameters, which are the values stored in number one and number two. It will calculate it and then return the value, which is the sum of, of both. So when we run this, output eight, three, it shows the two numbers, calls the add function, it will pass an eight, and copy 8 over, then it'll copy the value 3 over. So now these two parameters have 8 and 3, and remember 8 and 3 were our arguments that we provided. It'll add the 2 up, which is 11, then it returned 11. In the main it stores 11 and sum, and then outputs the sum. Um, so I hope this gives you some idea of how to use parameters um, and return types and how to pass values to a function that expects parameters.
um, and, and the values that we pass, though, these are called arguments. So thank you for watching.